how did your exam go? Which on you with you? Mommy, your voice is low. I'm saying, how was your exam? Switch on your video. I said both of the things together. It was fine now. Fine? Not good? Not amazing? It was good, but then once they started discussing, she was like, wherever uh, the questions, the diagram was not, not mentioned also, we had to draw. So if I didn't, I didn't draw for some of the places, she said she'll cut half or one of us. Okay. Yeah, some teachers have that thing that, but I also told you that draw it in a very rough manner also, but draw. You know, because teachers notice um, the diagrams a lot. Okay. Anyway, so students, the part that we were doing, did you people have any doubts? That? Are you people, uh, you know, this chapter will not be clear if you don't study it. Okay, or if you don't learn it nicely or read it like twice or thrice, because you know it has a lot of technicalities related, like everything is related to human body and everything. So pay attention. Okay. So uh, we were talking about the different nodes that are there: sinoatrial node, and then atrioventricular nodes. Two types of nodes are there. All of that. Right. This is. Uh, what is the last thing you people have written in your notebook? Tell me. You people just look into your notebooks and then forget that I was asking the question in the first place. Tell me what is the last line. Anyway, let us, uh, I have marked here, so maybe this is what people wrote last so uh we yes, know that at okay yes ma'am we wrote okay. okay okay everyone uh, all of the students please switch on your videos everyone okay so we were talking about how the bundle of his the perkinji fibers and all of those nodal tissues and everything are there now moving forward the av bundle divides into right in the left bundle and we know that the av bundle and along with the Purkinje fibers, that is what we call as the bundle of his. Moving forward, the right and the left bundles, they give rise to fibers throughout the ventricular musculature, meaning throughout the muscle of the ventricle. And these fibers are called as the Purkinje fibers. Now, the nodal musculature, meaning the muscles of the node or the nature of the node is auto-excitable. Auto excitable means that it does not require any um, signal to be sent to it to get excited. It gets excited and excited doesn't mean it starts dancing. Excited means that it starts giving impulses so that the heart would be. Imagine nodal tissue being like, no, but it does it work and it, you know, it excites the heart, meaning it makes the heart pump. Now, it has the ability to generate action potential without any external stimuli. We don't have to tell our heart to beat. Our brain doesn't have to do that. It does it on its own. Now, the sinoatrial node can generate maximum number of action potential. That is 70 to 75 times per minute. And this is a very rhythmic contraction that happens. That is like contraction relaxation so always a contraction is followed by a relaxation and since the whole entire pumping of the heart or the whole entire beating of the heart is done by the sinoatrial node so we call the sinoatrial node as the pacemaker it is the pacemaker of the heart and many a times in many people that have undergone certain damage to the heart so their SA node gets damaged so they undergo a surgery for like, you might have heard about open heart surgery, right? In that surgery also, the pacemaker, a sort of like a machine operated pacemaker. Now in the case wherein the sinoatrial node, the normal node has failed, right? Or it had gotten uh, defective. 
So in that case, an artificial or a machine will be set in the person's heart. Now, the machine will make the heart pump. So that is an artificial case. Now, our heart normally beats 70 to 75 times per, like in a minute. The average comes out to be 72. The beating of the heart per minute is what we call as the heart rate. Now, let us see which chamber receives which kind of blood from where and all of that. Now, the right auricle receives the deoxygenated blood. Now, always remember the right hand side of the heart will be receiving the impure blood or the dirty blood. Before I tell you these things, remember that. Tell me which is the pure gas for us? Oxygen. Oxygen. And what is the medium of transportation of gas in our body? Oxygen. What did you say, Zainab? Arteries. Okay, arteries. Okay, anyone else? Uh, the hemoglobin in the blood which carries the oxygen in the stomach. The blood. The blood is the medium. Okay. Arteries is also right. But inside the arteries, blood is only flowing. Right? So, always remember that the gases in our body, they are transported with the help of blood or the medium of transport is blood. Now, whenever oxygen binds with blood, particularly the hemoglobin of the blood, hemoglobin is written as Hb. Then it forms a compound which is called as oxy hemoglobin which is written as HbO2 okay and when the CO2 binds with this hemoglobin we call it as carb carb amino hemoglobin okay now, you know, when I was in class 11, so when I used to study about it, so I used to question this one very uh, obvious thing, that if oxygen is binding with the hemoglobin, it's making oxyhemoglobin. Then if carbon dioxide is binding with the hemoglobin, why is it not making carboxyhemoglobin? Why carbaminohemoglobin? Isn't it? Normally, we think that. So always remember this compound name is carbamino. Don't confuse it with carboxy. Carboxy is when carbon monoxide binds with the hemoglobin. This is a very poisonous, like you people might have heard about um, monoxide poisoning or cyanide poisoning. If you have heard about, this is what happens. Carbon monoxide is made in our body and that binds with the blood, making the blood very, very impure. So, <clears throat> so when the CO binds with the hemoglobin, then we call it as carboxy hemoglobin. Now, furthermore, when um, oxygen is there in the blood, then this kind of blood is oxygenated blood. Oxygenated blood. Or you can call it as what? The pure blood. Isn't it? It is the pure blood. Moving forward, when the CO2 is mixed with the blood, CO2 is a foul gas for us. We don't need it. Then it is the deoxygenated blood. Deoxygenated blood. Or you can call it as impure blood. Impure or dirty blood. Clear students? This much is clear? Yes, ma'am. Now, let us see how the process of circulation happens in us. Okay, tell me one thing. Which kind of circulation happens in humans? Double circulation. Double. Double circulation. Double okay. circulation. The kind of human, uh, the, the circulation that takes place in human beings is double circulation. Now, in the double circulation, the right auricle, right? The right auricle, it will be receiving the deoxygenated blood. Now, from where? From coronary sinus and two large veins called as vena cava. 
that is superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. So the particular right atrium, if this is the right atrium, this side, so it will be receiving the blood from the coronary, meaning the vessels that are carrying the deoxygenated blood to the right auricle will be coronary sinus and the vena cava. At the same time, the left auricle receives the oxygenated blood from the lungs through the two pairs of pulmonary veins. The pulmonary veins, they give the blood to the left auricle. Okay, initially this is what happens. I don't know why I've started to explain this. Anyway, the rest of the part I have not written here. I will tell you how it is happening. So, for example, if I draw it in a box form, this, this is much easier to understand. For example, this is right auricle and right ventricle. You will understand everything in cardiac cycle because all of the things are mentioned in cardiac cycle. And this is left auricle and left ventricle. So, the right auricle is receiving the blood from the coronary sinus and the vena cava. Vena cava is a big, big vein. It is a very large vein. Also, uh, students, do you know the difference between arteries and veins? Always remember that all arteries carry O2-rich blood, meaning they carry oxygenated, oxygenated. Hmm, oxygenated blood. Right, except for one artery, that is pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery is the only artery which will carry deoxygenated blood. Clear, students? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Great. Now, same way, all the veins. carry CO2 rich blood meaning the deoxygenated blood except for pulmonary vein which carries oxygenated blood. You have to remember this uh, slight exception in this case okay because this is important and this is very very crucial. So except the pulmonary vein meaning the pulmonary vein will be carrying which kind of blood? Oxygenated. Oxygenated. Clear to you all? Now, after the right auricle and the right uh, left auricle receives the blood, now from the right auricle, the blood moves into the right ventricle. From the left auricle also, the blood moves into the left ventricle. And then it gets sent out. Basically, this is what happens. But there are a lot of technicalities that goes under this. For that, we will talk about the cardiac cycle. Now, cardiac cycle refers to the, uh, you can say the whole entire process wherein the contraction of the heart is taking place, the relaxation of the heart is taking place, and then the blood is being pumped out to wherever it is required. Now, remember that contraction, we say it in a very normal language. But if you want to say it in terms of biology, you say systole. So, contraction of the heart, or systole of the heart. It's the same thing. Relaxation is known as diastole. So, relaxation of the heart or diastole of the heart. Same. Now, initially, meaning when no circulation is happening, when nothing is happening, right? Then all the four chambers, they are in a relaxed state. Meaning none of them are pumping. None of them are getting filled up with blood or anything of that sort. So, they are in joint diastole. Joint diastole means all the four chambers will be relaxed. Clear? This is the first thing. Now, the blood from the pulmonary vein and the blood from the vena cava fills the left auricle and right auricle respectively. Meaning... When the blood will be coming from the vena cava, 
Vena cava is a very big vein. Okay. So, it will enter into the right auricle. Then, the oxygenated blood from the uh, lungs, it will enter into the left auricle through pulmonary vein. Clear? Now, to start with, all four chambers of the heart, they are in a relaxed state, which we call as joint diastole. Now, blood from the pulmonary vein flows into the left auricle, right? And the blood from the vena cava flows into the right auricle. Now, from the auricles, the blood flows to both the ventricles. Meaning, from the auricle, the blood will be going to the ventricles, isn't it? Because it has to go to the other chambers. And 70% of the ventricles, they get filled up with the blood. Now, at this stage, the semilunar walls are closed. Where is the semilunar wall present? It is present in between two auricles. Chambers. Between? Two chambers. Between what? Two chambers. Two, no. In between the right and the uh, right auricle, right ventricle, the tricuspid, bicuspid walls are present. Semilunar walls are present in the blood vessels that take place from the ventricles. So at that time, during the time when ventricles are being filled up, at that time, the semilunar walls are closed. Now, after this filling of blood is done, now the sinoatrial node, which is our pacemaker, it will generate an action potential, meaning now it will tell the heart to contract. So, firstly, both the atria, or you can say both the auricles would contract together, right? And we call it as the atrial systole. Now, initially, the blood that filled up in the ventricles, it was only 70%. But imagine you are squeezing the auricles now. So now the blood flow to the ventricles would also increase. So now it gets increased to 30%. And all in all, now the ventricle gets filled up with 70, uh, 100%. Clear? You people are understanding this thing or is it confusing you? It's understandable. Everyone is understanding. If there's anyone who is not able to understand, please tell me. Okay. Whenever you don't understand anything, I'll say again. Now, after that, what happens? We know that the um, sinoatrial node is connected to the AV node. Right? And then throughout the ventricle is connected. So, the impulse from the sinoatrial node, now it travels to the AVN. That is the atrioventricular node and ultimately to the AV bundles, meaning the ventricle side. From where the bundle of his transmits the action potential throughout the entire muscle of the ventricle. Now, when the ventricle receives the, uh, you can say, signal, then the ventricle contracts. Okay, it, it is like sitting normally. It is getting filled up with the blood. Now, once the ventricle receives the signal that okay now you can contract so immediately the ventricle contracts which we call as ventricular systole now while the ventricles are contracting now the auricles will relax while the auricles are contracting the ventricles will be in a relaxed state now as the ventricle contract the ventricular pressure increases and this causes the closure of the tricuspid and the bicuspid wall meaning the wall that is present in between the chambers of the heart. They will close up so that while the ventricle is contracting, the blood should not flow backwards. So that is why that wall will be closed, but the semilunar wall will be open because now the blood has to rush out of the ventricle or else the ventricle will burst, isn't it? So now the semilunar wall gets opened and the blood now flows into the pulmonary artery from the right auricle, uh, sorry, right ventricle, and aorta from the left ventricle. These are again blood vessels. I'm writing here so that you people don't get confused. Okay, and now uh, the the walls they are pushed open and the blood. Now after this is done, the ventricles would relax, and the pressure in the ventricle will go down also. 
and the semilunar wall will close back up because the pressure is decreasing. Now, while the uh, ventricular pressure decreases, now what happens? The, uh, the bicuspid, the tricuspid wall, they are again open. And then the whole entire process will take place yet again. Is it clear, students? Any doubts anywhere? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Oh, very good. Now, talking about what a cardiac cycle is. So, the systole and the diastole of the auricles and ventricles, they make up the cardiac cycle. We study about the systole, meaning the um, thing, the contraction, the diastole, the relaxation, while we study the cardiac cycle. Now, the whole entire duration, wherein systole, diastole, everything is happening, it is happening only in 0.8 seconds. That's it. Our heart beats 72 times per minute. That is our heart rate. And the volume of blood that the ventricle is pumping out is 70 ml. It pumps out 70 ml of blood, which is called as the stroke volume. 70 ml is the stroke volume of our blood. Now, when you multiply the stroke volume into heartbeat, you will get cardiac output. Okay. Now, on an average, 5,040 milliliters or 5 liters of blood are pumped out by our heart. And this is the cardiac output that we have. Clear, students? Ma'am, 5 liters in 1 minute. Mm -hmm. In 1 minute. No matter however many times the ventricles are pumping, we'll pump out 5 liters of blood. Clear? Any doubts? No, then of the blood pumped out by the ventricles, it is 5 liters. Okay, and it is constantly being pumped out, used, pumped out and used. Clear, students? The whole entire process, is it clear? Do you, do you remember the names of the blood vessels that are involved? Or forgotten? Let's, okay, one by one, you people only tell me. If the diagram is like this. If you don't learn it now, you will never be able to learn it because, you know, once you set it to study on your own, it's very difficult. Do you see how long it is? It requires thorough understanding. And if you're not understanding, say it. Now, first of all, you tell me in between the right auricle and the right ventricle, which valve is present? Tell me the name of the valve. Tricuspid and bicuspid. Both of them are present here only. Tricuspid. Tricuspid. Right. Sure, everyone? Tricuspid. So, yes. these are the walls. You, you people understand walls? Okay. What is the function of walls? They yes. stop the black Prevents the black backflow of blood. Hmm. All of you are correct. It prevents backflow of blood. Very good. Now, in between the left auricle and left ventricle, which valve is present? Bicuspid. What is the other name of bicuspid valve? The other name for bicuspid valve. It starts with an M. Mitral walls, M-I-T-R-A-L, mitral wall, mitral wall, whatever you want to call it, mitral walls, okay? Now, there are two sources from where, the which kind of blood enters the right part of the heart? Very good. And the left part receives the oxygenated, right? Very good. Now, there are two blood vessels that are carrying the CO2-rich blood into the right auricle. The first one is the vena cava. Okay, it is a very big vein. And the second one is coronary sinus. These are the two major areas from where the oxygenated blood is coming. And the uh, left auricle receives the oxygenated blood by pulmonary vein. Because pulmonary vein is the only vein that carries which kind of blood? Oxygenated. Hmm. Now, when the blood comes from here 
and from here then it will go from the right like from the auricle to the ventricle so now the blood will move here so in order for the blood to move inside the bicuspid and the tricuspid walls must be open isn't it so during the filling of the auricles the walls of like the tricuspid and the bicuspid walls are open okay now exiting from the right ventricle and from the left ventricle there are again blood vessels from the right ventricle pulmonary artery will be taking out the deoxygenated blood and from the left ventricle aorta this is a very big artery it will be taking out oxygenated blood now which kind of wall will be present here tell me the name of the wall that will be present at this opening semilunar hmm. semilunar wall yes so at the point where blood vessels arise from the ventricles of the heart then here semilunar walls are present okay now while the auricles are getting filled up which walls will be open and which one will be closed the bicuspid bicuspid no. bicuspid will be open semilunar will be closed right very good now while the ventricles are contracting which one will be open and which one will be closed semilunar will be open and tricuspid and by, yes Close. It will be closed so that while the ventricle is contracting, some blood can go up also. So this, if it is closed, then it will not let the blood go into the auricles back because that is not something ideal. Then what happens is that after the blood gets pumped out, so this aorta will carry the oxygenated blood to the whole entire body wherever it is required and this pulmonary artery will carry the deoxygenated blood to the lungs why will it carry to the lungs to get the oxygenated from for inside. getting oxygenated so that it can get pured right so now from the lungs the pulmonary vein would carry it to the left auricle this is how it happens clear students any yes. Doubt? I hope now it will be clear, right? Okay, good. All right, now you people can note it down. You can switch off your videos and write down top.
ดินมาพอลฟิวดันสูดเลยโน้มโอเคโอเคดันมาดันมา
Done, ma'am. All of you are done, students? Everyone's done? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Mom, can you please change to left? Then all of you are done, students. 
Yes, Done, ma'am. Then Done, ma'am. All of you are done, students? No, ma'am. Okay, I'm waiting.
Dan all of you are done, students.
done students Am I audible, student? Hello, am I audible, student? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Done, right? The upper portion will you people have noted down? Yes, sir. Okay.
Kan student Yes ma'am Alright Any doubts up until now No 